so excited. It just looks beautiful. Yummy, Chef. Oh, goodness, that aroma is fantastic. Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to the Very Vera Show. You know, Augusta, Georgia is full of talent and you're going to meet another talented young lady here today. Her name is Kelsey Burak and she is the latest champion of Chopped Sweets on the Food Network. So if two Georgia peaches are going to get together, we're going to make some wonderful things with some Titan Farms peaches today. Kelsey's going to show you how to make three of her favorites. We're going to start with the peach cobbler. It is wonderful and one of my favorite parts is just I have brown sugar in it. Then we're going to move into a peach galette. And my most favorite thing about that is the almond flour that she uses to make the dough. And then finally, let's get fancy with some peach souffle. These all sound scrumptious. So I know we've got a lot to do in Vera's Corner. I'm going to show you how to freeze fruits to be able to use them again. So let's get started and meet Kelsey on that peach cobbler. All right, well, you know, in March, when everybody was thinking, you know, we can't watch enough TV, everybody in Augusta, Georgia was really zoomed in on what <laughs> you were doing on Chop Sweets. Kelsey, welcome. Thank you, Vera. Thank I'm, you for having me. I'm so glad to have you. And, you know, you've been dreaming about this since you were 12 years old. So tell the audience a little bit about your story and what we're going to be making today. So we are making peach cobbler today, and the crumb is um, from my grandmother, her, her recipe. So I'm really excited to share it with everybody. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the on cooking the peaches and everything. But I knew pretty early on, unlike many people, that I wanted to be a pastry chef. Um, I had a little accident at school, and it led me into a bunch of bake sales oh, and I'll baking. Just take that one right <laughs> And um, through baking, I was able to make such a difference with different, um, you know, just different causes around school and, and all of that, and just raise money for the burn center and everything else. And I really just enjoyed making change, and I decided to go off to Johnson and Wales for school and, and really learn the craft. And, and you went to the one in Charlotte. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Because I've got to mention these peaches because we had so much fun. You and I were talking about in the in the summer we filmed at Titan Farms, which is a beautiful property, and we froze peaches while they were in season. And now we're making some really great things today out of our Titan peaches. It's perfect because the season here in um, you know in the South, it's wonderful to go berry picking or peach picking mm -hmm. with your family, and then to be able to use them throughout the year after the season ends is just perfect. Now, see, this was the part about this recipe. It was so cool when she said, "This is these are some of the things that I want to make." I loved this cobbler recipe because it uses brown sugar. Yep, it's a much deeper flavor because it still has that molasses in it. These unlike... grannies are so <laughs> smart, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> these grandmother recipes, you can't beat them. All so right. I'm just going to go ahead and add some of this vanilla paste. Okay, so this is the Nielsen Massey, which are the flavorings that I have been using for years and years. And you know, Kelsey, we partner with so many wonderful partners on our show that are all family businesses. And this is no exception. This company has been in business for a hundred years. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's just these, they're strong, they're good, they're wonderful. So you're putting in the vanilla. A little bit of salt. I just did the vanilla paste. Okay. And then over in the crumb that we made earlier. Oh, yes. Tell us about that. Got, so that one we have, so we're done with the brown sugar. And um, cinnamon. Yep, I'm going to need a little bit Ooh. of cinnamon. So the crumb is truly just more butter, more brown sugar, mm. some salt, a little bit of cinnamon, vanilla, and almond extract. Golly. I mean, but you can't just, have cobbler without cinnamon. And that cinnamon. was the other thing, you know, when I was describing what we were going to make today, you know, cobbler, you know, it's beautiful and it's delicious, but you start putting a wonderful topping, mm -hmm. it's just like takes it to the next level. I think everyone loves the crumb more than the actual fruit that's in it. And, <laughs> you know, and I have to certainly suggest that the fact that these, there's nothing about those peaches that make them look like they came from the freezer. Mm -hmm. I mean, and for a cobbler and for something that you're going to bake with it, that just works out great. The other thing I love here, y'all, is that she's using disposable pans. So do you hear gift idea? I do. That's one of my favorite things. Okay. I mean, during the holidays, um, it's so easy, something easy to put together. So we're going to go ahead and turn the heat off on this now. Okay. And I'm just going to add in some flour. And this is just to thicken it up a little bit during that baking process. Oh, man. 
And this really is grandma's recipe as far as there's really no measurements. It's all by, by feel. <laughs> She's just eyeballing it. <laughs> but we're going to give you some really good suggestions for those measurements on our website at veryvera.com. So she's going to finish putting that together. We'll get it in the pans. I'll put the topping on. When we come back, we're going to get started on the galette. Oh, man, this is wonderful. Welcome back, everybody. If you're just joining me, I'm in the kitchen. We're making wonderful recipes with peaches. I'm with Kelsey Burak, and we are having a great time. She is the champion from Food Network's Chop Sweets. She's an Augusta native. And tell us what we got going on here. You've been busy. Yeah, so this is our galette dough that I'm going to go ahead and transfer over to the sheet pan right now. Okay. I made that earlier. We had some flour and almond flour. And um, we had really cold butter, a little bit of vanilla, salt, and sugar. And all of that got mixed together in our KitchenAid, and then we chilled it really cold. Okay, I've cleaned the, that um, off and you can put it back. <laughs> God, just look at all those big all of the butter. pieces and of butter. that's why it's so important to have chilled butter when you're making any type of dough like this, even you know, pie dough, all of that. Um, it's just the same. So we're gonna grab this almond paste right here and put some in the middle. Ooh, okay. Well now let me get let me talk to you a little bit about this dough. You know, all the leftover you can also use for stuff. Absolutely. Right? You don't ever throw any of this dough away, no. right? So pastry is your specialty. That's what you yes, did in France. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I studied in France for a little while at um, a school called ENSP, which was Elaine Ducasse's pastry school, and I got to travel Europe, which was absolutely Phenomenal. I mean, who gets the chance to do that? Wow. And eat great food, make great food, um, and pastry is, is what my heart desires. So that's what I'm all about. Well, and getting into the program at Johnson & Wales was very fortunate too. Absolutely. Because that, I mean, that experience, I've used a lot of chefs um, during the Masters Golf Tournament that come out of that um, school. Absolutely. Oh, I a love lot the way the smells. If you're an almond fan, okay, tell me when. Oh, you can keep going a keep little bit going. more. Keep yeah. going, okay. And I'm going to go ahead and start on the peaches, and okay. we're just going to layer those around. Now, a lot of this extra dough is going to get cut off, so we're going to just make it look beautiful in the center. A galette gets folded in a way where you can actually still see the fruit. It sounds so fancy, doesn't it? <laughs> we had cobbler, so we've been a little plain. I feel like we're stepping we're doing it up every yeah, recipe. Every, every <laughs> segment, we're getting fancier. Oh, gosh. All right, and then, you know, the presentation on this too, you know, when you do desserts, you know, sometime you're going to go ahead and, you know, have it in a bowl or on a plate before anybody ever sees it. This mm -hmm. could almost be the centerpiece. Absolutely, and this definitely is a family style. You can make little miniature ones if you're going to have individual, um, but we're making a family style one right now. Oh, yeah. Well, I know some families that would really love this. And, you know, I think we're always, you know, we get bogged down on what we always do. Here you go. Oh, you. What we always do on with, you know, with peaches. You always make the same thing. Peach ice cream, peach cobbler. Let's go but ahead and this get is this different. Okay. And I saw you, I know you're very careful about these knives. Oh, absolutely. You know, sharp knives. Okay, so speaking of that, when you were on Chop Sweets, that one of the people, one of the guys on the show said you were a ninja <laughs> in the kitchen. And I loved that. Yeah, Zach so, Young, he was a great judge to have and experience. He was so funny. Um, and he was he was really sweet, but he called me a ninja because I was I was chancing a souffle, which we we're gonna chance next segment. So Oh man, y'all, this dough is so soft. I mean, I would be saving every little bit of that because you can also it. use it for garnish. Absolutely. You know, make little maple leaves or um, make a little peach to go on top. We're just going to go ahead and start folding it, and it really is just a almost you know your own style how you yes. how you can get it folded. And if you see that there's a little extra dough, you can just come back and trim it Cut up a little bit. 
you know, um, we mentioned the fact that I wish I could brag that you had come to my cooking camp <laughs> as a 12-year-old since you got this bug in your bonnet back then. But, you know, I think you this knack that you have for understanding the process, um, your recipes, we t we've talked quite a bit about the fact that you use the metric system. Absolutely. And so in terms of pastry, why is that so important? Um, in my personal opinion, I've used various different types of, you know, measuring and scaling, but metric is just a no-fail. Mm -hmm. If you can have anybody, show them how to use a scale and you can give them any recipe and it's going to turn out the same every time. You know, and as, as far as you know, Vera, I mean, you can measure a, t a flour with a cup and it's right. going to turn out differently. But if you have a number... Like we did in the cobbler. Exactly. But if you have a number that you have to meet, everyone's going to get okay, it the same sprinkle, time. Okay, let's sprinkle because we're going to have to go into a break. Okay, so while she's finishing the garnish, let me tell you that in Vera's corner today, we're going to give some tips about how to freeze these fruits while they're in season so you can use them later in the year. And then we're going to get started on that souffle. I can't, this is actually my favorite one coming up. So, oh, that's looking beautiful. Come back with us in just a few minutes. Vera's Corner is sponsored by Tax Slayer. It's your refund, go get it. You know, it's fun to be able to use your favorite fruits in the winter time. So let me give you some tips today on how to preserve those when they're in season. The first step to freezing fruits and vegetables is to buy them when they're ripe and fresh. If your town has a local farmer's market, try checking out the selection there first. To freeze individual berries or cut fruit, wash and dry the fruit well, then place on a lined baking sheet with the pieces not touching. Freeze the pan, then transfer pieces to your storage vessel. For fruits that brown easily like peaches and apples, dip them in a solution of water and lemon juice before drying to keep them looking good after freezing. To freeze vegetables, the best method is to blanch and shock before freezing. To do this, prepare a large pot of boiling water and an ice bath with ice and water. Drop the vegetables into the boiling water a little at a time. Make sure the pot stays at a consistent boil. Depending on the type of vegetable, blanching times will vary. When the vegetables are ready, remove them from the water and put them in the ice bath to shock them, stopping the cooking process and keeping colors vibrant. Dry vegetables thoroughly before packing for freezing. A little work now will pay off when these foods are out of season. Welcome back, everybody. And I'm so excited about this recipe. I mean, the souffle just sounds so fancy, and um, you've made it easy for us. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and add some vanilla paste to this milk while you go ahead and get the um, egg yolks whisking. We're going to add some sugar to that. And uh, once you have that together, we'll add in the flour. Well, you know, in Vera's corner today about the, how to freeze all the different fruits and everything, I bet there's a bunch of people out there wish they'd put peaches in the freezer oh, absolutely. this summer. But um, next summer you can. All right. So and then you can go ahead and add in your flour. And, you know, I just love this recipe because it's so versatile. Even if you don't have peaches at home, you can truly put um, any fruit, any liquor. We're actually going to be using a bourbon today, salted caramel bourbon, which is one of salted my favorites. Salted caramel bourbon. From mm. the Smoky Mountains, actually what? local. Mm -hmm. Man, okay, so That's this perfect. is yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll go ahead and take that. Perfect. You can leave the whisk in. I'm going to use okay. that too. Okay, okay, great. And then if you want, would get the um, the Egg French going. meringue started. That would okay. be perfect. The French meringues. There are three different kinds of meringue, but we're going to do a French for this souffle. Okay. So I'm going to turn this up all the way. This is one of the reasons I love these glass bowls you can see because they're exactly. higher and you can kind of see a lot better. And I'm oh going to go man. ahead and put this back into the pot and get it cooking. So now that custardy smell exactly. is really coming on. And if this recipe, you know, if you make it well and the, the, the pastry cream is nice and thick, it really is a fail safe because Souffles are known for being fragile, but this pastry, this custard cream, it really helps stabilize it. Okay, let's go back to this vanilla paste that Absolutely. we used a minute ago. Um, again, Nielsen Massey, and why this paste 
you know, doesn't give you that liquid that spoils this nice thickness. Exactly. It's just a pure vanilla bean paste, and it, it, it not only does it give you the beautiful speckle of a vanilla bean, mm -hmm. but it just adds so much flavor without thinning out any recipe. Well, and they're all natural, gluten-free, allergy-free, allergy-free, all those things that you have to be concerned about. All right, this is looking pretty good. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. Oh, wow. Look how nice that's getting. We're going to get that nice and thick. And would you grab the, uh, the oh, bowls absolutely. from behind you? Okay, these are the pureed little peaches and that wonderful salted bourbon caramel. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. All right, and then you've already prepared your ramekins for us, yes, too. Yes, ma'am. And that was butter and flour. So uh, butter and sugar, actually, and that sugar helps the structure of the souffle mm. on the outside. Okay. Let me turn this up just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and add this in here while you get okay. that meringue finishing. Mm. And you see you need how the thick. You to at all? To this should be fine. Thank okay. you. The, you see how thick that that custard really gets. Okay, remember to whisk said, this together. She uses the metric system for this, but we are going to have all of these recipes posted on our website. We're almost there with this. And you know, desserts, we've done one that you can cut into slices. We've done one that you're going to just scoop up with a spoon. Exactly. And now this is going to have its own individual Serving. Um, plated. And you do a lot of beautiful dinner parties for folks too. Don't yes, ma'am. Private, you know, I might, I might be a pastry chef, but I do love a private dinner every now and then. Well, I got a. Um, I got a text message one Saturday night from my son John, and he was at a dinner party, and. Um, he said, look who's cooking my dinner tonight. It was Kelsey. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. They enjoyed it. Okay, is this about ready, you think? Almost, yep. We're just going to wait for that to get to a medium stiff peak right before stiff so that it folds beautifully into these, uh, into, into the cream. Ramp. Okay. So and we'll then we're going to pull these up. ramekins over. And this is a nice big pastry bag. It's just going to make it easier to get into the ramekins. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead. We're tag teaming here. This is when you need to get that young person involved with your grandmama and mama to <laughs> teach these wonderful skills that both of us learned from our grandmothers. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to have to cut into a hard break, but we're going to finish this up during the break. And when we come back, we're going to show you how to present this beautifully. And we'll learn more about Bottom Line Bakery, which is the new business that Kelsey has going in Aiken. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Those are gorgeous. And I've got a little cake stand Perfect. all ready to go with some vanilla beans. Can you believe this? Your friends will think you are so fancy. <laughs> These are my favorite. They really are a just a fail-safe souffle recipe. Oh, gosh. Well, why don't we start with this? We're going to go back through everything we did today. So let's just start at the end and move up. Absolutely. The souffle, I would say the biggest note is make sure that you get that um, meringue nice and medium stiff peak mm -hmm. when you fold it in. Well, I must have done pretty good. You did perfectly. Our cobbler, I would say all the sugar you want, all the butter you want, make sure to use that vanilla paste for some extra flavor mm -hmm. and bake it for a little bit, maybe 20 minutes or so until it starts to bubble and you're good to go. And I love the disposable pans. Absolutely. So it's a you perfect gotta always gift. have a gift in your freezer. And of course, serve it with some ice cream. Oh, I mean, a la yes. mode is the best way to go. As far as the galette, make sure that it bakes beautifully. You want to make sure that that bottom crust dries out nicely and oh, then slice it, it up for, for all your guests. Well, and like we said, you've got an individual piece because you do this a lot of times um, in your catering. You've got a piece that could be on a buffet exactly. if necessary. And then something that can also be a centerpiece exactly. you know, for the table and have everybody look forward to it. Well, I hope you like the display it's today. Beautiful. I'd love to incorporate the peachy colors. And even though peaches are a summer 
fruit, you can bring them into the fall by preserving them Absolutely. when they're in season and having them there. And then I have to point out that the cover on the table today are placemats that my older brother Tripp they're so made wonderful. for me out of wine corks almost 30 years ago. So I'm still using them, Tripp. They're just amazing. So, you know, Kelsey, you have been a wonderful guest. Obviously, everybody knows now why you won Thank on you. Chop Sweets <laughs> and what a great experience that was. But, you know, tell us a little bit more about now the next steps for you. So, really excited to announce that I'll actually be opening a brick and mortar. Bottom Line Bakery is the business that I've started and Bottom Line Bakery and Cafe will be opening in Aiken soon and hopefully one day in Augusta as well. Um, but I'm just making good pastries, spreading well, good food. And you know, you tell us about this because your cakes, things that you have put on Instagram and Facebook that you've done, you do, that's your favorite thing. Absolutely. Making cakes, I love making cakes. That is one of my favorite things. Just, um, custom cakes, I mean, they're just so beautiful and you can get so just artistic with them and it's edible food, it's edible art. Um, but I do love just doing, uh, you know, catered events and, and plated dinners and the whole nine yards. Well, and she's, she's just recently catered for several friends of mine, so please Please keep her in mind for that. I want to thank you so much for being my thank guest you for today. Me I wish you the best of luck in the future with everything that's going on. So come back next week with us. We've got Brian Hart Hoffman back for the third time. And you know, Kelsey, I always say on the Very Vera Show, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. You got a lot of great things to look forward to here with these recipes. See you next week.